how to read a chemistry book or any textbook at all. You're all ready to start your first college class. It's exciting and a new experience. And they hand you a large textbook and tell you to start reading from page one at the beginning of the semester and at the end of the semester, you'll be at the end of the book. You open the textbook and you are lost. Does this sound like you? If so, this video will help you read a textbook. We'll be covering a chemistry textbook, but really this could apply to any sort of textbook you encounter in college. Table of contents. Every college textbook, especially a chemistry textbook, has a table of contents right at the beginning of the textbook. This will list chapter titles and numbers, section titles and numbers, and page numbers. This section is helpful if you know the topic and or section and you need to find the specific place in the textbook. Whenever you begin a class, you should always flip through the table of contents to see what is going to be studied. Pause this video now and flip through the table of contents of your chemistry book or whichever book you need to master. The index and glossary. Every college textbook, especially a chemistry textbook, has an index and a glossary at the very end of the textbook. Do you not know the meaning of a specific word in your homework or activities? The glossary is a great place to start to find out what the word means. Do you know a topic but you don't know where it's covered in the book? Then the index is where you want to go. Both of these resources have the keywords in the book listed in alphabetical order. Things specific to a college chemistry book. Most chemistry textbooks will have a periodic table and a listing of elements somewhere on the front or back cover of your textbook. This periodic table is helpful when looking for properties of the elements. Some chemistry textbooks will also have a listing of commonly used conversion factors, constants, and units. These tables will also be in the front or back cover of your textbook. There should also be a series of appendices that are at the end of the textbook. These appendices are more important as you go further into the class because they will contain lots of constants you'll need to complete problems and to do homework. Pause the video now to see if you can find the periodic table and the appendices in your textbook. Remember, the appendices are sometimes buried in with the back information, so you might have to do a little digging to find them. Three goals to reading a textbook. There are three goals when reading a textbook. You want to learn the correct information because you can't learn everything that's in the textbook. You need to retain the information, at least until the test, but hopefully beyond that. You should also study in the most efficient way so you can have time for all your other classes. Do not read your textbook like you would an internet article. Most people are reading articles online to get the gist of the information. This is not what you're doing. You are reading to apply, define, analyze, and evaluate what is presented. Active reading. It is best to do a little bit of reading every day. Read for 30 minutes every day, seven days a week, and you should have this course mastered. Or set yourself a goal in some other way. Write one page of notes about your textbook every day. And make sure you get yourself a reward when you're done reading. Do you like to play video games or search the internet? But make sure you're doing active reading. Don't just passively read or trace your eyes over the text and think you understand, because you don't. You can use these tips to actively read a college chemistry book. You can use one of them or you can use all of them, but you need to actively read the textbook. Start from the back. Your college chemistry textbook is rich with information, has lots of interesting pictures, tables, diagrams, and graphs, and probably contains small supplemental sections with information you might find interesting. When you open to a page of a chemistry textbook, it's very busy with pictures, text, tables, and example problems. Where do you start? Well, hopefully your instructor has broken it down for you, so you only need to read certain sections or chapters on a specific day. I find it's always good to start at the summary section of the chapter. The summary section is a clear, concise restating of all the important topics of the chapter. It should have all the keywords that you must understand while reading the chapter highlighted in some way. But be careful if all you read is the summary section, because every sentence in the summary is important, and they may also miss a lot of the explanation of why the information is important. Pay attention to formatting. So now that you've read the summary of what you're supposed to read, turn to the first page of the chapter. I've mentioned before that the chemistry textbooks have a lot of figures, tables, diagrams, and pictures. These are things to pay attention to. Redraw the figures in your own hand. But some of the pictures are really not all that important. They're just there to illustrate a certain point. Chemistry textbooks also have words in bolded print. You must know the definitions of these words. Also, in some textbooks, these words are defined in the margin of the page. Important equations are usually placed on their own line in the text with a number to notate them. 
This number is used in the text or problems when referring to the equation. And finally, in most chemistry books, there are example problems that are in the textbook. Look over these problems carefully and take notes on them. This leads nicely into my next tip for active learning. Write notes or ask questions on the topics of the textbook. I mentioned previously to redraw the graphs and important figures in your own words. This is something important to do if you want to understand chemistry. You'll want to take good notes while reading your chemistry textbook. What do you want to write when taking notes? Take notes by listing all the important words, bolded words, and writing down their definitions. Then you can use them in a sentence that is related to what you just read. Also, ask questions about what you're reading. If you don't understand something, write it down in your own notes. This way you can go back to it later and ask your learning assistant or instructor about it. Also, make sure you take good notes on example problems. You will more than likely see these problems again on tests or homeworks. How to take notes. If you own the book, you can take notes in the margins, underline, and highlight the text. But remember, we will still want a sheet of notes turned in over your readings or your watching of the video. You can also flag important points by using post-it notes in the text. Probably for a chemistry textbook, there will be a lot of flags, so I don't know if I recommend this way. Or if you're renting or borrowing your textbook, take notes as you go along or after you're done reading a section of the text. I hope this video has helped you learn the best way to read a chemistry textbook. Please watch the next video on effective ways to solve chemistry problems.